Hello everyone. In my last video, we talked about what we call the, the primary stresses. Uh, normal stress due to axial load, shear stress due to the direct application of shear, normal stress due to bending moments, and shear stress due to torsion. So I want to talk a little bit about how we then use these stresses to, to apply them to a point of interest and, and start to analyze uh, the situation of stress for a free body diagram that we're looking at or a, um, a rigid body that we're looking at. So typically what we would do is we apply these to what we call a stress element. So this is a theoretical infinitesimally small bit of material to which we apply the stress and use it to better understand what's happening, right? So just as a, a bit of, um, a bit of uh, interest or, or a bit of, um, what am I trying to say? Review, we have our primary stresses, sigma A, tau V, sigma B, and tau T. And we consider these to be our primary stresses. So anytime that we're analyzing a rigid body that we have loads applied to, uh, we want to first kind of pick you know, where we're looking, what's our location of interest. And a lot of times we can do this by intuition. We can say, well, we know, you know, because the load's applied over here and the distance is the greatest from here to here, we can say, okay, it's probably at the, the base, right, it is a common example. Um, once we know that location, and sometimes we have to do some analysis to find that location, but once we know where it is, we can pick a, what we call a stress element, which is that little square that represents the stress at that location. So if I go ahead and draw a stress element, we typically say it's a square, and we typically draw it on some xy axes. So I'll go ahead and just draw in uh, a set of xy axes. And these are just arbitrary, right? Arbitrary coordinate system that we decide um, how it's oriented. We often might orient it um, along the long axis and then the, the perpendicular axis for, you know, circular shafts and things um, would be a pretty typical way to do it. But uh, we pick those more or less arbitrarily. And then with these axes defined and our stress element defined, we say, well, there's going to be a stress, a normal stress in this direction. Let's call it sigma x just because it's pointing in the x direction. A normal stress in this direction. Let's call it sigma y for the same reason. And then we might have a shear stress, which we need two arrows to represent. And uh, we might call that tau xy because it's oriented in the xy plane. And there's only going to be that one shear stress when we're talking about planar situations. Um, but we use two arrows. Um, to represent it. And you may recall why we use two arrows in this case uh, from my, my last video where we said that for equilibrium, we have to represent the shear stress on basically all four sides uh, of our stress element. And therefore to add in the balancing stresses for shear, we would have our remaining two arrows. And for our sigma x and sigma y, we would have our equal and opposite uh, stresses in the opposite directions. Now, one thing you might notice right away is that I've written sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy, and nowhere did I write sigma a, sigma b, tau v, and tau t. And that's because when we take our primary stresses and put them onto our stress element, we need to figure out how they, they work in combination. So in reality, sigma x might be sigma a, positive or negative, it might be sigma b, and it might be sigma a plus sigma b. Um, recall that they can work in conjunction. They can sum uh, to increase the total stress, or they can work against each other. So it might be sigma a minus sigma b, all depending on which direction these arrows are, are actually pointing. So some combination of those things. 
And of course, this is also the same for sigma y. Could be any combination of these stresses depending on directions. Tau xy follows the same basic guiding principle, which is that it could be tau v, tau t, tau v plus or minus tau t. So again, positive or negative on each of those, um, depending on the direction of everything, but they, they sum up. They can, they can somehow um, be added to each other um, and work in conjunction or, or work against each other. Now, taking a step back, when I drew this stress element, remember that I said the orientation was arbitrary. I arbitrarily picked the direction of x and y when I apply that to my, my um, physical rigid body that I'm looking at. So that means that I could have picked any other arbitrary orientation and not really, you know, changed what's actually happening. I'm just looking at it differently. So that means that to be, to be complete, we need to actually look at everything. We need to look at all possible orientations um, of our stress element. So I'm going to give myself a little more white space here. And because that orientation is arbitrary, let's say that I instead drew my stress element like this, where I still have x and y coordinate systems. But now my stress element is no longer, um, you know, square with those, with those two coordinate axes. So in this case, let's say I need to define then a new coordinate system, which is my x direction pointing normal out of that side. And to give it a different name, I'm going to call it x prime. And then the same thing, oops, in the y direction, y prime. And so these are rotated from x and y, uh, but they're now in, in line with that rotated stress element that I kind of arbitrarily defined. So we can define this new coordinate system by saying, well, it's rotated off of the original one by some angle theta. And in this new coordinate system, I have stresses, right? I have sigma x prime, I have sigma y prime, and I have tau x prime y prime. And these primes, again, all just indicate that I'm now talking about the new rotated coordinate system. And just remember on the back side, I would have arrows that would be equal and opposite of all, you know, four of these arrows that I've currently drawn for my stresses. So what happens then? Well, once I've done this, I need to remember that my stresses, my primary stresses up here still apply and they, you know, result in these X prime, Y prime, you know, everything else. But I can go ahead and, and I've pre put the equations in here for us. I can represent my new stresses in the rotated coordinate, rotated coordinate system, which are basically purely by geometry, I can say I have sigma x prime, and it's equal to some combination of sigma x uh, and sigma y, and that angle theta and tau xy all put into one equation. I have the same thing for sigma y prime and the same thing for tau x prime y prime. So using geometry, I get these new stresses. And the key, the key thing here um, that we need to know about this is that my sigma x prime, sigma y prime, tau x prime y prime may be greater than, I don't know how to write this, may be greater than sigma x, sigma y, tau x, y. So if I really want to understand the state of stress in my system, I need to know what those maximum values are. And some of you are probably already ahead of me and you say, well, you know, we can't possibly analyze every possible angle, right? I mean, you could rotate it all the way around. Luckily, it's symmetric, so you'd only have to rotate it 180 degrees. But that's a lot of uh, equations to calculate. 
But we have a useful tool to this that I'm going to talk about in my next video. And you're probably, you've probably heard of it before. Uh, but the tool that we're going to talk about next is More Circle. More Circle is really just a graphical representation of what I've just said. I have my stress element. I can rotate that stress element through any rotation I want. And More Circle lets, helps me graphically understand uh, what's happening when I do that. So more circle is a really useful tool for understanding what the maximum state of stress might be in my system. And I'm going to talk about that in my next video. Thanks.